Hey, Jamie from Fuel Moto. Today we're gonna to go through on how to use your Downjet PV4 with the new Auto Tune app on your Harley Davidson. The first thing you wanna do is open the app from your mobile device. You wanna make sure you run the latest app. If it doesn't ask to update your app, just delete it and reinstall it from the App Store. It's gonna scan your vehicle once you turn your ignition and run switch to the on position. And once it finds your vehicle, you're gonna find Auto Tune in the bottom left corner. So go ahead and select Auto Tune. It's then going to ask you which tune you'd like to select, so just go select tune. And now it's going to bring up any tunes you have in the cloud that you'd like to choose for auto-tune. So with this one we're going to select the, this tune that I have under my tunes. So will select that and once you have verified that's the tune you want to enable for auto-tune, go ahead and press select auto-tune. It's going to give you three prompts. At the top you have auto-tune basic, auto-tune pro, and target tune. Auto-Tune Basic is for use with the factory O2 sensors. Auto-Tune Pro is the AT Pro kit with wide bands, and Target Tune will use the Target Tune kit with the wide band sensors. So this bike has stock sensors, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose Auto-Tune Basic and go ahead and, and enable. Important to note on this first screen here, there's some parameters that you can adjust, basically for the hit, for the hit counts, the deviation, and minimum engine time and such. For this example, we're just gonna leave, the, leave them just as they are, right from Dynojet. Go ahead and enable Auto-Tune. And it'll give you one more screen to verify that's the tune you want to use. So go ahead and once you verified, flash your auto-tune file. And it's, there's one more prompt. It's going to make sure you're to let you know your battery needs to be fully charged because it does take you know up to a minute or so depending on the, on the year, make, and model of your bike and such. So we're going to go ahead and select yes. And at that time, it's going to transfer the tune to your PV4 and then reflash with the auto-tune enabled file. Once the flash is completed, you want to turn the ignition off for about 10 seconds. And once you turn the ignition switch back on, run switch, you are ready to start your auto tune sessions. We'll take you to that screen quick and show you. And note, if you're in auto tune mode, to generate corrections, you do need to have it back on the auto tune screen to bring up this histogram. Now what this histogram is going to do, it's going to show you the running area of the bike and all the hits, the, the hits, the averages, the percent error, and the actual VE table. Um, and you can actually look at the front and rear cylinders live as you go. There's also gauges across the bottom for live data. Um, and you also have some buttons on the bottom so you can change your settings for your session. You can change, you can apply, disable, or reset your corrections. You can also look at the live gauges while you go through here, or this is your main table view. But we're going to leave this on the main histogram screen for right now. And uh, one last thing is you can also toggle between the X and Y axis for the histogram. That will basically give you between uh, throttle position, RPM, or you can change those. What we're going to do is we're going to run this bike. We're going to take it down the road through the industrial park, put some time on, and I'll come back and show you what the data looks like as it goes. So when you first start the bike, it will need to fill in data. You are going to see some errors at the bottom there, such as uh, has not met engine temp, things like that. And that's going to be normal because the bike has to get up to engine temperature and other certain parameters before it's going to start building data. But once it does, it's going to build some really good corrections and fill in this histogram for the area right, and uh, we'll show it what that looks like in just a moment. You can see as the bike's warming up, you're gonna get some air across the bottom here. Uh, invalid, sample, temp low, that's gonna be normal. Okay, once you've completed your, your auto-tune run, now you can analyze your session. And you can see here, this is from about a 15 minute ride through the industrial park. You can see on the histogram screen the area where it's uh, generated its, its corrections and its data. So uh, you can see here, if you, you can go through the, the various screens, this is gonna be the hit count, uh, the average, the percent error. The two you're really gonna concentrate on the hit count and percent error. This is gonna be the percent error that Autotune has derived from the O2 sensors versus the commanded AFR table or Lambda. So you can see most of this here is right on the money. There's a couple outliers uh, that were a little more, but most of those were in a couple percent. Same as the uh, rear is actually closer even. So a couple of cells here that, that it caught that, that may, may be some like transients or something caught during transitions or decel, but for the most part, it was the tune that we were using here was really, really accurate. You can go through front and rear, then you have your, your different, different screens you can go through there. Okay, so after you've evaluated your auto-tune corrections, you're gonna go down to session, and you're gonna give three options there. You can accept your corrections and apply them. You can reset them if you don't wanna use them, 
or you can disable auto-tune. This is a really important screen here. So applying your corrections is gonna take what it's learned, apply them to the tune that you, that you use for your bass tune, and then generate a new tune. That, in most cases, are, are what you're gonna do. And going forward, we typically say do two to three 20 minute sessions, and between each session, apply your corrections, and apply them, and start over. The next is gonna be to reset your corrections. That's be, I didn't like what it did with auto-tune, but I wanna kinda keep going. You reset that, then you can start over in auto-tune mode. And the last is gonna be disable auto-tune. What that does is it takes it out of auto-tune mode and flashes your original tune back in that you had. It's really important to note here, auto-tune is for use or for temporary riding when you're in a, in a state where you wanna build data and correct your tune. And that mode is not for normal running to normal conditions because it does set some stuff up in the tune uh, different than normal. So when you're not going to be doing any tune sessions, you want to be outside of auto-tune mode. So so when you when you want to be developing your corrections, auto-tune, yes. Outside of that, auto-tune disabled. So we're going to go ahead and apply your corrections here. And again, you, you can look at the front and rear uh, here. Uh, this is what's gonna. This is the actual VE table, and one really cool feature we have in here. We'll get in, into this a little further in the next video where we go with some advanced settings. Uh, you can actually take where we saw that a couple outliers. There is some table filtering and and smoothing. You can actually take that stuff right out of there if you like. Again, we'll go into that a little later. But in most cases, just go ahead and accept accept your tune. And what this will do is this will create a new tune uh, based on your base map. It'll be the same title. And after that, it'll say auto tune one, two, three, etc. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And if you want to flash it, you'll turn your, your ignition and run switch on. And as you can see, it says auto tune one there. And now we want to flash tune and exit. Now, there is a quick, a quick way. If you want to flash tune to begin the next auto tune session, there's a quick, quick way to do that too. You just flash the tune, begin your next auto tune session. But in this case, we're going to flash the tune. And, and exit out and then just select yes and again it takes you know 30 seconds to a minute depending on your vehicle and it's going to flash back into your to your ECU of uh, the finished tune and at this point once it's done flashing you'll be ready to ride and again like we say two to three 20 minute sessions will generally get you where you want and uh, yeah stay tuned for the next video where we go on some of the more advanced settings <laughs>